。嗯，你看什么呢？我看我吃哪一碗？这什么玩意儿？嗯，大葱和大蒜呀、啊。你给它切一下呀，去去去，给它切一下。你这样我怎么吃得下去？就这样，不是都吃了吗？你快点的，这女士多。小葱花、蒜末，还有辣椒圈你看喜欢吃什么？我的饭呢？你不是不吃了吗？谁说我不吃了？我还没有吃呢。你在这吃多食的？一个人。做好了吗？马上就做好了，这几个饺子包完就煮饺子啊。什么意思啊？这饺子还是生的？你在家干嘛了？我忙了一早上，马上就煮饺子了。这什么玩意儿、啊？你不是喜欢吃猪肉吗？我今天专门给你买的猪肉做猪肉饺子，看着一点食欲没有，啊，跟一坨屎一样。哎呦我的妈！<笑>你一上午了，我都睡了一上午了，你饺子再做不好了，我不吃了。我现在换衣服啊，我出去吃好吃的，你自己在家慢慢做吧。什么意思啊？哎，老公，吃饭了，吃饭。这什么玩意儿、啊？鸡蛋炒的番茄。你是炒的还是炖的？来，你看，那水分这么大。这什么玩意儿、啊？蒜黄炒豆皮儿。两个素的，一个肉也没有。去给我炒个肉的去，我要吃肉。好好，我先给你炒。哎，老公，肉炒好了，赶紧吃吧。这什么玩意儿、啊？青椒炒的肉片。青椒炒肉片儿啊、嗯，那一盘子青椒，肉呢？就这点够谁吃的？算了算了，再给我炒个青菜去，我要吃青菜，一点不会做饭。来，老公，再炒好了。别动，不觉得少点什么？啊？那汤也没有吗？那你让我，哎呦我的妈！干爹，那我咽得下去吗？你好歹给我接不接碗白开水也行啊。那你自己去接一下不就行了？哎，我要你干啥呢？那你还犟嘴？好，我现在去你接啊。你快点的。来，老公，手工擀的面条，这什么玩意儿？今天做的蒜面条。你放这么多蒜，那你口味咋这么重呢、啊？我下午还上班呢，我吃这么多蒜，我给人家小姑娘说话，人家都离我远远的。刷刷牙不就行了吗？那你面条，你光吃面条和三汁了，连个鸡蛋也没有弄吗？呀，忘了忘了，我先去你炒啊。要你有啥用？天天都忘了忘了，那都不会一次弄好。哎，老公，鸡蛋炒好了，吃吧。别动、啊，你光炒鸡蛋。那面条黄瓜丝也没有吗？去去，给我弄个黄瓜丝。好好。
这什么玩意儿？那鸡蛋咋炒这么碎呢？来，老公，黄瓜切好啊，来，赶紧吃吧。你这个蒜汁里面不行啊，咋了？醋和辣椒放太少了，一点味没有。就给我拿点醋和辣椒过来。好好。这什么玩意儿？嗯，这黄瓜丝切的大的大，小的小。你屁股真凳子啊，是不是？我去给你拿东西，还在这埋怨我。一个人。<笑><笑>什么玩意儿？辣椒炒的肉，你尝尝可好吃。你肉你非洲移民过来的，那这么黑，我不吃，你自己吃吧。这什么玩意儿？韭黄炒的豆皮儿。你豆腐皮儿配韭黄，那他俩搭配吗？你问没问人家愿不愿意在一起？那你就硬往上凑。我们将就吃是吧？我娶个你，我都够将就了。那我吃个饭你还让我将就，那我将就不了啊！将就不了是不是？将就不了不过。<笑>老娘给你做现成的不好吃，还在这。那那那不过了，那谁给我做饭了？你你，一个人。<笑>来，乳面做好了，吃饭，老公。我的碗咋这小、哎？那你的怎么这么大？多盛两碗不就行啊？你拿来吧你，这点够谁吃的？<笑>这什么玩意儿？啊，豆皮儿。那黑不溜秋的，跟那黑梨蛋子似的，一点食欲没有。Oh no！ 这啥玩意儿？调的腐竹了。那这玩意儿就白不拉几的，咋的？一黑一白，黑白双煞呀！不讲了，早点说啊！我一个人吃，我也清静一点儿。天天做着你的饭，还不好吃。老公，最喜欢吃你做的饭了。滚！一个人。<笑>来，老公，吃饭了。这什么玩意儿、啊？我嫁到你们家，我不图跟着你吃的有多好，住的有多好，穿的有多好，我就图我做的好吃的。你能说一句好听话，会不会？一个人。<笑>我都喊你八百遍了，不知道出来吃顿饭呀、啊，都不知道答应一声，那不是没听见吗？<笑>老娘做着饭不帮你点忙，做好了还喊不到桌子前<咳>，你说什么呢？没事没事没事，我说这做的什么菜？<笑>这什么玩意儿？啊？蒜苔炒肉。哎，你看，肉炒这么干。那咬都咬不动，那吃起来都费牙。<笑>这什么玩意儿？这白不拉几的，一点食欲没有。这什么玩意儿？啊？我问你话呢，什么玩意儿？你看，看起来一点食欲都没有，你还喊我吃饭？你说你做这一桌子菜，没有一个合我的胃口。别动！你这做的什么玩意儿啊？炒的苹果。你炒苹果，谁让你放辣椒的？你看，一个干辣椒，一个小米椒，还有姜丝儿。你口味咋这么重呢？这什么玩意儿？你看，水分这么大，一点食欲没有。还有这个。这红烧肉过年到现在，你吃了多少肉了？你吃的菜挑三拣四的，能吃不能
你在哪？媳妇儿，你你还真打呀？你不是让我打的吗？一个人。<笑>什么玩意儿？鸡蛋炒的韭菜。你炒鸡蛋，谁让你放辣椒呢？我不能吃辣，你不知道吗？这什么玩意儿？嗯？专门给你做牛肉。你看这牛肉干巴巴的，一点食欲没有。我。这什么玩意儿？哎，不想吃你做的饭，一点胃口没有。那别人家吃饭都是一种享受。我吃你做的饭，那都是煎熬。哦哦，你吃我做饭煎熬是吧？行，那你以后别吃了。来，以后敢吃老娘做的一口饭
点，就做这点饭，你再做不好了，那也不就做点饭吗？你说我在家干嘛的？老娘在家洗衣做饭、打扫卫生、照顾老人和孩子，不比你在外面上班轻松。我告诉你，啊，能吃就吃，不能吃给我滚！<笑>那也就提了点意见。这一个菜就准备坐着吃了，你这点够谁吃的？那够我塞牙缝的吗？再给我炒个肉的去，我要吃肉。好好，我现在给你炒。想吃什么肉啊？你随便，能炒出个什么花样来？你这米饭咋还这么吃呢？来，老公，肉炒好了。这什么玩意儿？青椒炒肉丝。你天天吃猪肉，你不恶心？那我看也看的恶心了。你能不能炒点牛肉，炒点羊肉也行啊？你不是说随便吗？那你咋这随便呢？我要我要吃吃吃牛肉，去给我炒个牛肉去。你快点啊！会做饭吧？嗯？肉炒的乌漆嘛黑的，看着一点食欲没有。这什么玩意儿这是？嗯？这青椒还是生的，一点不会做饭。你笑，老娘给你做现成的，你不好好吃，还在挑毛病是不是？老虎不疼，你当我是病猫呀？你不是说去炒牛肉吗？怎么<笑>想吃自己滚去做。
。那么早，那甩都甩不掉。<笑>站住！干嘛去？去哪里不知道？给我打报告。就这样，这也办了事，给你的教训。行行行，那先这样，我先教训你嫂子。老婆，我错了，面子，面子，这你随便打，随便打，面子。哎呦我的妈！老婆，你想吃什么自己做啊，这老娘给你做最后一顿饭，老娘不伺候。你干嘛？我给你做的饭不是咸了就是淡，不是淡了就是细，以后想吃什么自己滚去做，我要去直播。你看你那熊样，又老又丑。有人去看你没有？哎、<笑>来，姐妹们，进我直播间，让这个臭男人看看有人看我没有、啊？老公，孩子都在这儿，你想抽烟你出去抽嘛，孩子都闻不了这烟味儿。他闻不了这烟味儿，让他出去，我今天就要在这儿抽烟。你就出去抽嘛。你干啥呢？你是不是想挨揍呢？你今天信不信我揍你？咋着啦？妈，孩子在这呢，他非要在这抽烟。哎呦我行了，走开，赶紧。我出去抽，出去抽。你要坐这揍我，那我不早点出去了。Johnson, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chief Justice, President Eisenhower, Vice President Nixon, President Truman, Reverend Clergy, fellow citizens. We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning. Signifying renewal, as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now. For man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish. All forms of human poverty and all forms of human life, and yet the same revolutionary belief for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. We dare not forget today. That we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans 
born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. This much we pledge and more. To those old allies whose cultural and spiritual origins we share, we pledge the loyalty of faithful friends. United, there is little we cannot do in a host of cooperative ventures. Divided, there is little we can do. For we dare not meet a powerful challenge at odds and split asunder. To those new states whom we welcome to the ranks of the free, we pledge our word that one form of colonial control shall not have passed away merely to be replaced by a far more iron tyranny. We shall not always expect to find them supporting our view, but we shall always hope to find them strongly supporting their own freedom and to remember that in the past those who foolishly sought power by riding the back of the tiger ended up inside. <laughs> to those people in the huts and villages of half the globe struggling to break the bonds of mass misery, we pledge our best efforts to help them help themselves. For whatever period is required, not because the communists may be doing it, not because we seek their votes, but because it is right. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. To our sister republics, south of our border, we offer a special pledge to convert our good words into good deeds, in a new alliance for progress, to assist free men and free government in casting off the chains of poverty. But this peaceful revolution of hope cannot become the prey of hostile powers. Let all our neighbors know that we shall join with them to oppose aggression or subversion anywhere in the Americas. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the master of its own house. To that World Assembly of Sovereign States, the United Nations, our last best hope in an age where the instruments of war have far outpaced the instruments of peace, we renew our pledge of support to prevent it from becoming merely a forum for invective, to strengthen its shield of the new and the weak, and to enlarge the area in which its writ may run. Finally, to those nations who would make themselves our adversary, we offer not a pledge, but a request that both sides begin anew the quest for peace. 
before the dark powers of destruction unleashed by science engulf all humanity in planned or accidental self-destruction. We dare not tempt them with weakness, for only when our arms are sufficient beyond doubt can we be certain beyond doubt that they will never be employed. But neither can two great and powerful groups of nations take comfort from our present course, both sides overburdened by the cost of modern weapons, both rightly alarmed by the steady spread of the deadly atom, yet both racing to alter that uncertain balance of terror that stays the hand of mankind's final war. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Let both sides explore what problems unite us instead of belaboring those problems which divide us. Let both sides, for the first time, formulate serious and precise proposals for the inspection and control of arms and bring the absolute power to destroy other nations under the absolute control of all nations. Let both sides seek to invoke the wonders of science instead of its terrors. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the deserts, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let both sides unite to heed in all corners of the earth the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burden and let the oppressed go free. And if a beachhead of cooperation may push back the jungle of suspicion, let both sides join in creating a new endeavor, not a new balance of power, but a new world of law where the strong are just and the weak secure and the peace preserved. All this will not be finished in the first 100 days, nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days, nor in the life of this administration, nor even perhaps in our lifetime on this planet. But let us begin. In your hands, my fellow citizens, more than mine, will rest the final success or failure of our course. Since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. The graves of young Americans who answered the call to service surround the globe. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though in battle we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle, year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. Can we forge against these enemies a grand and global alliance, north and south, east and west, that can assure a more fruitful life for all mankind? Will you join in that historic effort?
in the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. By me, whether you are citizens of America or citizens of the world, ask of us here the same high standard of strength and sacrifice which we ask of you. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own.